So I had so much fun fixing Suicide Squad that I decided to tackle a different film. This time it's Terminator Genesis. Now, now before you you leave, I understand that the franchise is a mess. That that was one of the worst films. Well, yeah, it was the worst film in that particular franchise. But stay with me. In watching Terminator Genesis, it actually oddly convinced me that there was a good Terminator film to be found. I mean, they didn't find it, but they were on the right track. So this is how this is how you fix it. So first, you keep the first fifteen minutes. Right, so that first 15 minutes stuff, that stuff was actually kind of cool. So you open with the attack on Skynet and uh, the future resistance, that was cool. They get to the time machine and this is the first hint that things might not be as they seem where you can see how many times the machine has been used and they see that um, it's a weird number, like maybe like 11 or something weird like that. But whatever, they need to, you know, it's a Terminator movie, keep moving. So then John Connor is like, hey, Kyle Reese, you need to go back in time so you can save my mommy. And you still have that scene where everyone surrounds Kyle Reese and he's naked and they're all pointing at his pee pee and he gets sent back in time. Then we kind of like do the whole revisionist type thing where we redo the past Terminator movies, but with a modern twist, which is cool. Like all that, all that was good. So old Arnold fighting young Arnold was cool. And the whole thing with Sarah Connor and uh, like uh, with the sniper and the uh, liquid Terminator being um, hit on with the acid and dissolving, all that stuff is super cool. But when the liquid guy, when he arrives, they should say, what is, what is he doing here? He's not supposed to arrive to, uh, and that's what this movie is about. It's a really simple concept. Skynet lost the war in the future. Skynet tried to eliminate the future leader, the resistance leader, and they failed at that too. Now they're going for plan C, the last Hail Mary, and that is they're bringing the war from the future to present day. Think of Rise of the Planet of the Apes, that sort of thing. That war that happens in the future is happening now but with terminators and all that stuff simple idea easy to wrap your mind around and the title you don't call it th that genesis bullcrap which didn't make any sense instead it's really simple terminators really easy just terminators clean simple to the point so what happens is we have multiple terminators being sent to present day or their present day the fun thing will be that the different Terminators have different missions. So you have one that has a classic uh, kill Sarah Connor protocol, and then you have uh, another one, uh, a liquid one, that his mission is to uh, assassinate the president and then get the nuclear launch codes and then blow things up. Another Terminator, he's there to protect the people that ultimately make Skynet. And so he's there to protect them, get them to a bunker, that sort of thing. Then you have another Terminator where it's disgusting it's just like this this gross thing with skin bubbles he looks like like skin grapes he's like ah, ah, whatever very Cronenbergus. and what happens when he lands the other terminators come around him and they just start ripping the skin open and inside they pull out guns from the future and that's his one job there should be like a time machine limit right so uh the time machine for example should only be able to travel back 30 years or travel forward 30 years Hence, you know, why not just send it back to the prehistoric age or whatever, you know, that you create these limits. This is actually a little confusing, but you would have a different Terminator, maybe two Terminators that are creating a time machine in present day to go back in time and eliminate Sarah Connor, which would then explain uh, Pops, who went, who ultimately raised her, that whole, that whole storyline, because that stuff was cool. And uh, why he later has gray hair, because that one goes to stop that one, to create that one, blah. Um, but that would be that whole thing. So anyway, <clears throat> the basic idea is that that would be the movie. The movie is Terminators throughout the U.S. or the world enacting this plan. And we don't know fully what the plan is. As they're discovering it, we're discovering it, and they're trying to stop Skynet. There's some fun themes to explore here as well. You have the whole thing of Sarah Connor having prepared for this from uh, Pops, who is a... The Terminator played by Schwarzenegger. How uh, so she's prepared for this, but not exactly this. This is way more than she ever prepared for. When she meets Kyle Reese, 
who's supposed to be the one she falls in love with and creates the best baby ever, she should be disappointed. She's just not into him. And then he could also find out too of his impending death. So uh, there should be that struggle as well. And then the third act, the third act should be the world war in present day. This is where it should not be a secret anymore that Terminators are among us and we should have the military get involved and tanks and missiles and this and that and maybe uh, the missiles turn on each other and we see some interesting back and forth like that and there could be a really cool scene of uh, Kyle Reese where he gets a hold of one of the guns from the future we see him light up and he's sliding and shooting around corners and it's like second nature to him he loves this, this thing and that could be a fun moment for him and uh, we get as we get into the third act we see that Sarah Connor her feelings towards Kyle Reese have changed she's starting to like the guy and then he dies and then the whole thing this is where and they haven't had sex. She's not pregnant with John Connor. And the guy who she's supposed to fall in love with is now dead. And this is where it shifts. This is where she becomes now the leader of the resistance. She becomes the hope for human civilization. And as we move forward, we were kind of rewriting history. And we have this epic battle. And the humans win. Like We think she's been preparing for John Connor. She's been preparing for Sarah Connor. And the closing scene, she's heading to the time machine that was built in their time to destroy it. She has some grenades with her. And as she gets there, she sees that someone has used the time machine. Remember, it, it, there's a counter on there. And then she checks it some more. And she can see when they went. And, you know, we calmly see her drop the grenades off, uh, doing a Khaleesi, you know, uh, stripping down and uh, pops can pop up. And, uh, you know, it's like, well, are you headed? And her thing could just be like the future. Bam, she's out, which will close the movie off nicely and also set up uh, future installments because that's what this needs to be. This is all about sequels, sequels, sequels. But in this case, that will be a sequel. I will be willing to get behind. So comment, like, subscribe, and uh, let me know of any other films that you would like me to fix or, you know, whatever I just did here. So, um, later.